discussion, the presentation about perspectives on squatting in Europe. Um, I'm Alan Moore. Uh, I'm the uh, New York City uh, coordinator for this uh, conference. There are uh, still two days of events remaining. Um, I have a, here a schedule, which I will pass around. I hope everyone can get one. Uh, you know, you don't take it. Um, we have to leave here promptly at 7, because the Living Theater has the final performance of uh, Judith's play tonight. So uh, we will go to Clemente Soro Velez, which is on the corner of Rivington Street and Suffolk, entry on Suffolk, where the uh, cafe is arranged uh, to, to receive us for cash bar. Uh, okay, uh, my involvement in the Squatting Europe Collective began with an exhibition at ABC Rio in 2009. Um, called House Magic, the Bureau of Foreign Correspondence. This was based on my very uh, external research in uh, uh, Europe on the squatting and social center phenomenon. I produced uh, a catalog of this exhibition, which I have here, and is available for the cost of the copying, uh, $4. But I couldn't get all the material into that catalog. So, I produced another one. On the cover is the occupation of Prestes Maia in Sao Paulo, Brazil, but mainly the focus is, is on Europe, with some admixtures of material from uh, New York City. Um, and this project continued. Uh, 2011, I produced another. This is the banner from New York Battalion in Berlin, where the Squatting Europe Collective met. Uh, and I have now here, these are all uh, available online as PDFs. You can download and print them. But this is only in proof and will uh, only be out in, uh, in uh, March as a PDF online. But you can see uh, uh, Zuccotti Park, uh, things have changed. Anyhow, for the uh, PDFs, if you're interested, I pass around uh, uh, a little notice about where you can get that. And again, uh, if you don't, I've collected the remainder so I can take them to the next event. Okay, now I will turn it over to Miguel Martinez, who is uh, the convener of the Squatting Europe Collective. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm just sorry. going to. Sorry, I forgot. The Living Theater, as always, alternative institution is in strange circumstances. So I, I urge you to, uh, to contribute to this jar. I will pass around the contributions for this space. Sorry. So, well, I'm part of this collective of researchers, activists, and activist researchers. Uh, it's not very clear, this distinction uh, among us, but there are a lot of controversy <laughs> inside the collective. But we start this collective in 2009, and uh, we met for the first time just to share our experiences, our knowledge, our papers, our books. And we decided to follow with our research, and doing more research, more meetings, uh, also trying to make comparisons between different cities in Europe. And we also wanted to publish a book. That's the the ideal uh, destination that everybody decides, but uh, after two years and, and a half, we still have no book. But one is in progress, um, hopefully this year is going to be published. There are some other publications in journals, but the most important thing that we do is to visit uh, different cities in Europe, to meet with activists, to present our own works or collective works um, to try to uh, know the different political experiences of these cities. Not all of them are related to, to squatting, some of them are, uh, most of them are, but some other are social centers which are legal, but they are connected to past struggles about the squatting houses or squatting buildings for uh, political, cultural or social purposes. 
So we are very much involved in this network. Our network is growing and growing every year. We are around now uh, 60 people in our email list. And um, more or less every six months we have a meeting, a very informal meeting, but very well organized, a self-organized meeting. It depends on who is in charge in its city. In this occasion, it was a little bit strange to go out of Europe and uh, coming to New York. But the thing is that Alan and Linus and our new members are joining the, the group also from the United States. So we are also opening our range of activities to New York. That was uh, also very helpful for us in order to understand how squatting was here in the past or how some former squats were now legalized and, and following with their struggle. So uh, our idea for this event today was to make uh, very short presentations about different countries. So we didn't prepare exactly what to say or what to tell about uh, these experiences and, uh, because it's too long. <laughs> All the stories in all of these countries uh, for more than 20, 30, or 40 years, it depends on the country, are um, full of uh, interesting stories to tell. So it's better, I think, to, uh, to initiate a sort of uh, group debate, interview, uh, just answer questions, uh, maybe focus on some particular issues. So I just will give the floor to some of the members of this web who are willing to tell a little bit about the uh, squatting, uh, the present situation basically in our countries or cities, or if you want to tell about one particular story, it's also fine. I mean, we didn't prepare so much this event because we liked more the, this spontaneity and these debates according to your specific interest about what is going on about the squatting in Europe. So, the know who wants to... Well, I was, I was uh, for the first time in the, the city in 1983, as a young squatter from Amsterdam. Uh, I felt that squatting was really cool. In Holland, uh, at that time, uh, we squatted everything, every, every uh, empty building that was discovered by someone was squatted. And put to use with a big housing shortage, a big need for social activities, so it was absolutely cool. And, Many Dutch squatters had the idea of sort of exporting this idea to other, co other countries. And we, we were interested to know that it was possible to do the same thing in other countries. So, a couple of people went to New York. We uh, showed a movie on the squatting in Amsterdam, in the Millennium Theater here on the Lower East Side. We put the posters on the, on the land post to get people there and uh, to discuss with activists. Uh, well, at that time, not so much was happening here, but later I discovered that uh, the squatting movement had started on the Lower East Side, which I found extremely fascinating because it's, uh, America uh, is a completely different country, of course. Private property is much more entrenched, much more important than in, in Holland. It's a different type of welfare state, so completely different <coughs> circumstances. And it was really exciting to find out that it was even possible here in this uh, uh, a burning point, this, the focal point of capitalism uh, to, to, to squat. So I tried out to find out what the secret was. And of course, it's a, it's a matter of experiments, I think. So uh, after the presentations, I would like to hear about uh, what your experience is with squatting, or things that almost like squatting. So what we like to find out in the collective is what the possibilities are and to, to develop strategies that can be um, exported or at least that are clear enough so you can so it's possible to, to, to learn a, across national borders. So that's, uh, that's the main reason for, uh, for uh, doing this. Now going back to the Netherlands, at that time uh, squatting was extremely easy. It was well accepted uh, by a large part of the population that has changed now. It's still, uh, uh, still supported by quite uh, a number of people, but um, there's some kind of repressive backlash which led to a uh, change in legislation that made, made squatting illegal 
in 2010, so now it's a prison sentence. It used to be practically legal to squat 